the first major part of this course uh, I have already completed that was the shear strength of soils and uh, I spent about 13 lectures discussing the importance of shear strength, how to determine this, what are the tests that are to be conducted and how to interpret the results. And at many places I have given you the importance of parameter selection so that they can be utilized in real life projects which I hope would be very useful and helpful for all of you who are into the field of consulting and advanced research in the realm of uh, geomechanics. So today onwards I am going to start the discussion on the second uh, topic, major topic of the course that is the plastic equilibrium in soils. So needless to say it is understood that this is the state of the stress which is causing the plastic equilibrium in the soils and uh, as a geotechnical engineer we would like to understand what causes this state of stress to develop in the system and what are the applications of this type of concept which is quite prominent in the practice. So when we talk about the plastic equilibrium in soils, the first question is where are we going to apply this concept. So the applications are basically this is the uh, application of uh, how to use the parameters. So designing of uh, retaining walls particularly. I normally call this as retention schemes and when we talk about the retaining walls and the retention schemes, the most prominent one which we are going to discuss would be the sheet piles, uh, we will be talking about the bracings. And before we talk about the bracings, we will be discussing about the cuts in the soils. These are also known as excavations. We will be talking about different types of sheet piles or the retention systems. Uh, this would be anchored. sheet piles all right and uh, you may say non anchored also so this is the first sub topic of uh, the plastic equilibrium in soils <laughs> having introduced the concepts of plastic equilibrium in soils today i'll move on to the analysis of uh, retaining walls from the next or next to next lecture onwards. The second major subtopic or the application would be analysis of slopes. All right, and this is where we will be talking about two types of slopes the finite slopes. and the infinite slopes. The basic objective is to analyze the slope so that the failure does not occur. So rather than talking about the stability analysis, normally uh, this thing is also called as stability of All right. So it is always better to talk about the instability analysis. So instability is you know included. So more focus is to study how the instability occurs so that as an engineer and as a designer I can stop the instability to occur. Then we will go for different types of analysis methods and I would like to spend enough time on slope stability analysis is a major 
topic which one should be studying during the undergraduate. The third major application would be uh, the bearing capacity. of soils of uh, the soils or you may say geomaterials because later on some of you might explore the possibility of studying the rock mechanics and then soils becomes a mesonomer and this can be applied to the rocks also. However, as I said some time back. Uh, this is beyond the scope of this course and there is a specialized course which you have, might be doing in the fourth year uh, that is the foundation engineering. However, one thing is common in all these problems. And what is common is that the objectives are common. And these objectives are I want to find out what is the cause of failure and how this failure gets stopped. Clear? So, that means what we call them as stabilizing forces and the second is destabilizing forces. All right. So, this is the principal objective in all these problems or the class of problems what we try to do is we just try to analyze the system for two types of forces. One is the forces which are stabilizing a situation or the failure and the another one is destabilizing forces. So, most of the time it so happens that destabilizing forces are <coughs> gravity and so destabilizing forces will be the gravity number one it could be rain. So, during the monsoons in the newspaper you keep your hearing that in the western ghats you know landslides have occurred, buildings have collapsed, dams are failing whatever <laughs> during rains. So, uh, one of the destabilizing forces is uh, rains, it could be snow also. We are lucky fortunately that we are not in the, uh, we are in the temperate climate and where we do not normally come across uh, snow forces much except for the northern reaches and the northeastern part of the country. Otherwise, uh, this is a major issue in most of the uh, entire world and of course, the earthquake. All right, man made. All right. So, this could be what we call it as a human interventions. So, one of the good examples would be earthquake comes, systems fail, nice because they give you literal force, human interventions. Uh, as he said uh, vehicular movement yes on the hilly terrains you are chopping off the hills and then you are moving the vehicles vibrations get induced and because of that destabilizing forces generate. Now, you must be realizing that the stabilizing forces are quite you know in isolation they do not have a big company. So, truly speaking the stabilizing forces are what any guess? What could be the stabilizing force which would resist the failure? Very good. Who has answered this? 
excellent nice so you have understood the materials very well so this is the shear strength so it was worth spending 14 13 lectures on understanding the material why because this is a lone fighter understand so the entire stabilizing forces in the system get mobilized because of its shear strength and we have done lot of justice with shear strength we have tried to understand what is shear strength how to determine it how to interpret it and all those things so now we are well equipped to move ahead and solve all these real life complicated problems all right or what else could be the stabilizing forces one is shear strength shear strength could be very weak so remember you go to the offshore environment or the mud flats where most of the construction is happening in bombay city right now you remember my statement that most of the best possible land has already been utilized by us or our grandfathers now what is left for you guys and the generations to come is all marshy land which cannot be rehabilitated so easily that means it's understood that the shear strength is almost either negligible or extremely poor and hence they fall in the category of challenging problematic type of soil deposits so truly speaking the fun is to deal with a situation where i can create stabilizing forces in the system despite the fact that shear strength is almost tending to zero a beautiful example of this is marine deposits where you can't even stand you can't even stand forget about walking because if you try to stand over there you sink all right so this is the objective and this is what the art of practice of geomechanics is what i have used the word as art of practicing the geomechanics clear in the worst possible situation also normally the criminal lawyers don't raise their hands and they accept the client fully knowing the fact that this guy is a criminal and he is going to be hanged so this is a very similar situation which we deal with clear so she has turned almost standing to zero marine deposits but look at this the economy of the country and the world depends upon whatever structures you have created in the offshore environment not onshore that is where the money is fine so these are general concepts which i have talked about the applications in so many areas and objectives so for that matter uh, one of the objectives of stabilizing forces enhancement could be let's say ground stabilization or ground modification or soil improvement starting from shear strength zero they will bring it up to a value where cu becomes greater than let's say finite all right and this finite value is obtained because of ground modification because of soil improvement so if this algorithm is clear to you now what we will do is uh, we will start describing the plastic equilibrium in soils so until now whatever you have studied was all elastic state of the material though i have introduced this concepts of k and kp and in the previous lecture if you remember we have tried to relate sigma h and sigma v with k parameter clear so what we defined as is if i define k parameter as sigma h upon sigma v i hope you understand the connotation this is the ground level i have taken a point somewhere here at a depth of z this is point p the state of stress at this point is sigma v and sigma z all right what i have done is i have defined this also sigma 1 equal to sigma 3 tan square 45 plus 5 by 2 if you remember plus 2c cos of no 
2 c tan 45 plus 5 by 2 this we derived some time back using the Mohr circle. We drew the Mohr circle and then we took sigma 1, sigma 3 and then we did some geometry and from there we described this clear and this is where I introduced the concept of role reversal of sigma 1 and sigma 3. So, in today's lecture I am going to talk about this much more in detail. So, please be uh, focused and try to understand this concept once for all. Once you have understood this concept, nothing can beat you. Now, this parameter is known as n phi and this is also equal to k p which is also equal to 1 plus sin phi over 1 minus sin phi. The way I am using these phi terms over here is this is generic term depending upon the situation this could become phi prime, this could become phi C u, this could become phi undrained, phi drained and all clear. That is implicit. The reverse of k p is known as k a and this is defined as tan square 45 minus 5 by 2 and this can also be written as 1 minus sin phi over 1 plus sin phi. So, truly speaking this equation itself is defining the state of plastic equilibrium in the soil. So, only thing what I have to do is if I write an equation let us say k is k p is k a is this understood. So, this term k p is defined as the passive earth pressure coefficient and k is defined as active earth pressure coefficient. Sometimes they also call it as coefficient of active earth pressure, coefficient of passive earth pressure. I hope you can realize this k can be termed as k naught. This becomes coefficient of earth pressure at rest. What is at rest? This is the elastic state. So, if this is the elastic state and we are saying at rest, now if I use this relationship, the lateral strain equal to 1 upon E sigma h minus mu sigma h plus sigma v. I hope you have understood how this equation has been evolved in the two dimensional space. So, this is corresponding to epsilon h radial strains. Now, when this tends to 0, at rest condition, no movement, natural deposition of the sediments, rivers are bringing sediments, they are getting deposited in the offshore environment just under Stokes law conditions. No transmission of energy from the next load to the previous loads of the sediments, clear? Elastic condition, no shaking, no movement, nothing, elastic situation. What it indicates is during the elastic state, there is no strain in the horizontal direction confinement. At that time what happens? Sigma h will be equal to mu times sigma h plus sigma v. That means, I can write this as sigma h 1 minus mu equal to mu into sigma v. In other words, I can write this sigma h equal to mu over 1 minus mu into sigma v. So, this thing I have derived and what it gives me is I am trying to now relate the state of stress existing in the material at its elastic condition, elastic equilibrium, poison ratio is involved over here and then what I can do? Sigma h upon sigma v I can write this as equal to k. So, very intelligently what we have done, we have derived a relationship for the k parameter using the poison ratio. This relationship is normally utilized to obtain the k parameter. There was a further simplification 
uh, which came from uh, simplification which came from a person known as Jackie. And this simplification states that k not equal to 1 minus sin phi. So all these terms and the equation which we are using right now, though they are derived from the elastic equilibrium, they are all valid for the plastic state of the material. Now let me define what is the plastic state of the material, is this part okay? And of course if you remember uh, in the previous lecture we discussed this K0 is a function of you know what RD, OCR, type of soil etc, etc, water content and so on. Is this okay? Now the question is how would you depict this state? Remember uh, we derived this equation A by this construction. So this is the tau sigma sigma plane, the more envelope, more coulomb envelope. At this point you have sigma v and sigma z. Depth is constant. That means sigma v equal to gamma into z. Hydrostatic condition. On this plane, if I draw a more circle, we have already analyzed this situation. The pole is at this point. Clear? This is equal to sigma 1, which is equal to gamma into z equal to sigma v. Perfectly all right. This point is sigma 3, okay. And then what we did is uh, so this is the more coulomb envelope, fine, the material material remains same, only the state of stress is going to change. At this point, if I draw a perpendicular, this becomes the center. What is the inclination of the failure plane? Any clues? Very good. Those of you who have not understood, please understand it, go back to your hostels and try to follow all these things to avoid disasters, fine. So this is the failure plane, at this point the failure is occurring, what is this angle? Very good, 90 plus. Phi, excellent, clear? What is this angle? A plane passing through the pole cutting the Mohr circle is the failure plane at which the state of stress corresponding to the failure is occurring, perfectly all right. So, this is a failure plane. Now, what it indicates is as long as your sigma v is greater than sigma h, all right. This is going to be an active earth pressure condition, all right. Why? Because k is going to be less than 1. Look at this. Fine. So that means in this case, your k a is going to prevail. So what we have done is, we have proved the state of the stress acting in the soil mass in the plastic equilibrium, though I have not defined yet what is plastic equilibrium, I will define it. And what I have said is that this is equal to sigma h upon sigma v. Sigma v by virtue of the point located at a depth remains constant. That means sigma h equal to k a into sigma v. 
Now, this discussion we had some time back about the role reversal of sigma 1, sigma 3, clear? Or let us say sigma h and sigma v. Suppose if I am interested in knowing what is going to happen when this condition gets violated and k a tends to become k p starting from k naught value. Yesterday we discussed this. So, if you realize what I did is this was the k f line, k f line and somewhere here if I have k naught line, if this is the state of the equilibrium which I am going to achieve from k naught I can go to k a or I can go to k p stress paths. Now, keeping this sigma 1 constant because this is gamma z, if k happens to be more than k naught, what is going to happen? Your sigma h term is going to be more than sigma v, where are, how are you going to plot this? Now, this is what is going to get plotted like, good, I could manage. So, this is the circle which is bigger in size number 1. Number 2, I have maintained the sigma v value, wherever this cuts the x axis, this becomes my sigma h, though sigma h again becomes sigma 1 now, fine. So, the way I read this is, this is sigma h, this is sigma v, sigma h is equal to sigma v into k term which is multiplied by k p. Now, the question is where is the failure plane and what is the inclination of the failure plane? Determine it. Find out the pole first. So, what is going to happen is the more and more complications in the problems come henceforth, we have to identify the poles, that is it. And that is what I told you at that time. Once you know where the poles are, life is simple. You just sit down in your design office, know the material properties, you have obtained C phi and other things, get the Mohr Coulomb envelope, plot it over here obtain where the failures are going to take place. Go back to the basics where sigma h is acting on horizontal plane or vertical plane. Sigma horizontal is acting on vertical plane. Sigma this horizontal was acting on vertical plane. The failure took place over here, the failure is going to be over here. Now, can I prove that the pole is going to be this point? Prove this. So, this is your P active and this is going to be P passive. This I did it when I was teaching the derivation of poles. Now, what you are realizing is, where is the failure plane? Any, point, any plane passing through the pole intersecting the Mohr circle, all right? Is this correct? So, this becomes your failure plane under passive earth pressure condition. What is the inclination of the failure plane? Do not mug it up. I mean, I think it is easy to understand, is it not? So, again, draw a tangent from here, let it cut over here clear. So, this angle comes out to be 45 minus 5 by 2, very good. We will realize that there is some contradiction which we have been talking about. Anyway, as far undergraduate things are concerned, you go ahead with this. So, what we have done, something 45 plus 5 by 2, something 45 minus 5 by 2, what is this? Plane passing through the pole, plane passing through the pole, inclination of the failures are going to be different under two conditions, active and passive condition. That is what is known as a state of plastic equilibrium in the soil. And these two planes are going to be conjugate to each other. That means, the plane 1 1 and the plane 2 2 are going to be conjugate to each other with the intersection between both of them as what 90 degree. 
So, if this plane is inclined at an angle of 45 minus 5 by 2 and if this plane is inclined at an angle of 45 plus 5 by 2, I think geometrically things are compatible. What happens is when the state of plastic equilibrium develops in the soil mass, all right, the failure planes get developed at either 45 minus 5 by 2 with respect to horizontal where the principal stress is acting or 45 minus 5 by 2 from the plane where the principal stress is acting. This is what is known as state of plastic equilibrium in the soil. Yes. Oh, do not, do not, do not, do not include the plasticity part. This is a plastic equilibrium. So, just hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, 5 minutes. I am coming to that. So, first of all, what I have done? I have defined the state of stress. Clear? Okay, good. I will answer your question. Truly speaking, there is no plasticity coming in the picture, but I will explain it to you. Sometimes in books, you will find that this is also written as flow factor. Somebody may ask you during your interviews. the material has a tendency to flow. That means, what we do is very conveniently we put C equal to 0. So, pure frictional material C is tending to 0 and the material is ready to flow, frictional materials flow. Go to any silos where the grains are being stored, all right. So, sugar, rice, wheat, urea, particularly fertilizers, they are all dropped from a hopper. So, normally what they do is they convey and everything to a hopper belt, which is a conveyor system and then they drop it from the top and this is how the heaps get formed. You know the value of phi value repose angle and if you see the silos, they are normally designed in this manner, keeping in view the friction angle of the material. This is where the application is and this is how the term comes, the flow factor, how much material can flow, alright, in a dry state. Now, I will extend this concept further and this will answer your question. So, by definition, uh, the state of plastic equilibrium in the soils is when each and every point in the soil mass is at the verge of failure, following this state of stress due to gravity only, understand? None of these forces are going to come over here. These are always superimposed. So, Gravity only plays the important role. Remember what we have done is the entire derivation is based on the gravitational stresses, the stresses which are getting induced because of the gravity, clear? Rest of the forces might play a spoil sport or they may help you in stabilizing the system. That is the engineering, but the basics are this. So, that means a state of stress in the, in the material remains either in active state or passive state. So, next time onward when you go to these monuments, you know, just come out of the monument and see, look at the walls, the way they were constructed and I am sure if you are matching the line of wall along with yourself, you will observe that the walls have moved out or they have moved in, clear? Or those of you who love hiking and trekking, you must have realized that when you go on the top of the hills, you will find depressions there at the top of the hill clear and at the base there will be a sort of a bulging. So, all these things are because of the state of stress which is acting in the system because of gravity only and we are trying to decode all these type of mechanism which we which prevail in the materials which are made up out of which are in the structures which are made up of soils, alright. So, what we have done until now is we have just defined the state of plastic equilibrium. Starting from this state of stress, let us say,
if this is the soil mass all right ground level remember when we were talking about the granular material long long back uh, we considered two rigid boundaries in the soil mass hypothetical so i am assuming that these are the two hypothetical planes which are existing in the soil mass which is semi infinite on both the sides what we studied during the compressibility of the material was if it is a granular material and if the walls happen to be rigid and if I compact it what is going to happen no deflection in the sides only compression is going to take place. But if the walls are flexible and if I apply the load the chances are the material will flow out clear I had done this action also. If you apply the loading over here granular material will flow out like this provided the walls are flexible. So, now I am assuming the first case we have analyzed compressibility and consolidation in the CE 323 by keeping a rigid wall assuming that epsilon h equal to 0 fine and not allowing any lateral uh, strains developing in the system. Two conditions exist stop writing. So, one is A A another one is B B look at the motion of the planes. Now, suppose as long as sigma v is constant there are two possibilities sigma h will either decrease or it will increase agreed. If sigma h increases what is going to happen these two systems will get they will come closer to each other when sigma h increases all right that means what we call this motion as if delta sigma h is greater than 0 these two will have a tendency to move closer to each other this is what is known as passive earth pressure. So, somebody was asking in the last lecture how this happens gravity does this at global scale geology does this tectonic motions they do this human beings cannot do it fine. So, this state of stress exists in the system because of the geology, because of the gravity and tectonic motions. Now, this is what is known as a global plastic equilibrium in the soils and at this time what is going to happen your sigma h will be equal to k p multiplied by sigma v. Hypothetical plane in the soil mass boundaries are flexible, the state of stress develops in such a manner that the two planes come closer to each other. What we call this as is the movement of the hypothetical boundary within the soil mass. This is the soil mass and the boundary is moving within the soil mass clear opposite might happen. So, it so happens that sigma h might become negative we have talked about all these situations stretching of the material clear. So, when you are stretching this what is going to happen now this is what is known as delta sigma h might be negative or less uh, let us not put uh, less than 0 sorry it is another state of stress let us say uh, I mean oh, okay I mean it is increasing let us say and this is decreasing this is better way is this correct because negative positive I cannot use. So, in this case what is going to happen is, is sigma h will be equal to k a into sigma v and this model is valid over here. So, this is the plane 1 1 and this is the plane 2 2 and this is how the state of stress is developing over here that means if I draw these lines in the entire soil mass they will correspond to the failure 1 1. How would I interpret? All these are the slip surfaces along which the material will have a tendency to slide up. One of the examples would be if I consider let us say this plane slip plane 
the moment this condition occurs, this material has a tendency, this becomes the parent soil mass and this becomes the block or the soil mass which is under passive earth pressure, alright, has a tendency to slide up and you have done mechanics to solve this, fine. The only thing is that this angle is going to be 45 minus 5 by 2. The moment I change the angle, what is going to happen? When I was stretching, this block from the parent body will have a tendency to get detached and slide down, alright. Angle is going to change because of what we discussed over there and that becomes your active earth pressure. When this type of state of stress develops in the soil mass, this is what is known as a state of plastic equilibrium in the soil, it is a mesonomer. So, plasticity does not come in the picture at all. The failure under active condition is going to occur when the slip surfaces are inclined at an angle of 45 plus 5 by 2 with respect to horizontal, clear. And the failure under passive earth pressure condition is going to occur when the slip surface is inclined at an angle of 45 minus 5 by 2 with respect to horizontal. And what is horizontal? Sigma h plane here, clear. Here this was sigma v which was cutting over here. Sigma v remains constant. The first condition was two hypothetical surfaces are coming close to each other because of formation of this type of stress. The slip surface which I have defined as this point along which the movement is going to take place as if this block gets detached from the parent body because of, because of gravity only, just because of gravity only, clear. So, because of gravity, the state of stress acts in the system which moves it up. That means the system is coming close to each other, fine. And why? Gravity. It does, gravity plays the trick. Look at this, all the tectonic motions. That is what we have been discussing. This is situation number one. The second situation is if you stretch it out, relaxation of the sigma h values, this block has a tendency to move down, the slip surface will change in compatibility with that, this will become 45 plus 5 by 2. This is what is defined as the state of plastic equilibrium in soils.